Hello everyone, in this video we'll talk about a very common and very simple pattern that used a lot in uh, Java and other object-oriented object -oriented programming languages. This pattern is DTO, Data Transfer Object. We will see why we want to use this pattern and we will see an example of its implementation. Okay, so let's say I have this entity. So this entity user that represents a user. So we have all the information that we are storing in our database. So the ID obviously is going to be our primary key, username, password, age, and last modified, right? So we have these five attributes. And let's say I have a front end application or a UI, and it wants some infos from this user. So I want uh, my front end wants some information from a user by ID. So what we do is simply we create a controller. We have this get mapping, we take in the user ID, and then uh, we just call this get user by ID method that return the user. <clears throat> okay. So if I go to localhost 88 user one, we can see that we return the user and our UI can basically get the information from this user. But we have some issues with this uh, approach. So let's see. So the first problem we have is performance efficiency. The, the actual application or the front end doesn't need all this information. The front end doesn't need the ID. It doesn't need the password. It doesn't need the last modified. It's only want the age and username to display it in, in the UI. So what we are doing is sending way more information that's needed. So it's actually hurt our performance because let's say this is just a very simple entity, but let's say we have a very big entity with way more attributes. So it's going to hurt our performance by each time sending data that it's not going to be used. So we're sending just data that's not going to be used. So we are hurting our performance and efficiency. The other problem and bigger issue is security. We are exposing some data that internal to our application and it's not needed by the UI. So we are exposing something like the password, uh, the ID, like this information are not needed by the UI. They are just uh, internal to our backend and sending them to UI is a little bit uh, dangerous. So it's, uh, we are hurting the security if, of our application. Another issue is flexibility. This thing is not flexible because each time we are just sending all the information that we have. So if I add an attribute here uh, in the user entity, we're just gonna send it all over again even if the UI do not need it. And this is a problem because we're just gonna uh, send more and more attributes that are not needed and are not used by the front end or our client application or maybe just another application, right? In adaptation, so again, this is this, uh, this uh, user that we are sending and this information that we are sending are not adaptable because we are just sending whatever we have in the entity, okay? So to solve this issue, and it's very simple. What we do is just we create a DTO, a data transfer object. So this data transfer object, it's a very basic object and that contains only uh, the attributes that we want to expose to the UI, for example, or the attribute that, want to, that we want to send in the API. So I just create this very simple class user DTO and I have two attributes, username and age, because this is the attributes that I want to actually show to the UI or I want to send. I don't want to send the ID, the password, the last modifier. I just want to send these two information that's gonna be used by the UI, right? So the first thing we create is the TTO. And then as we see here, we have the entity and we have the TTO, but we need what we call a mapper. And a mapper is will simply just take in the entity and will transform it to the GTO. That's it. And again, very simple. We just use, uh, we just create a user mapper and we create the map method. So we take in again the entity, we take in the entity which is the user and we return the user GTO. So I create user GTO, I set the username, I set the age based on what we got in the user. We can also do some, we can even add some stuff, some other logic, but in this case, I don't really need so, but you can do, you can do whatever you want in the mapper. You can add some other, some other logic. It doesn't matter. But again, we just want to create the GTO and we populate it from the user usually. 
And then in the controller, what we do, instead of returning the user entity, we, we, we will return the user DTL. And here in the return, what we'll do, we will be using the mapper. So let's use the mapper. We use the map uh, method and we'll pass in the user. And we will obviously rerun our application. And now we will send only data that's needed by the UI. So let's wait for our server. <coughs> okay, so now if we go to the this uh, request, there we go. So we now we only exposing what we need. So we are exposing the username and we are exposing the age. And that's pretty good because we are not wasting uh, performance. We are just only sending what we need. And also we are securing our app. We are not uh, exposing uh, sensible data. And also it's very adaptable because let's say uh, if uh, the UI need another information, I can just modify it in the user GTO and add uh, what we need. So this pretty much it, the GTO pattern is very simple, very effective. And uh, that's it for this video.